Hey, this is Heather Sides. I'm, hang on here, I'm trying to adjust my camera a little bit. I forgot to do it before I went live. So, hopefully, got a, I've got a good angle here. This is Heather. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Spokane, Washington. This is my assistant, Lucy, who is um, not very assistant-y. She's not very helpful. And, oops, sorry, I just put my hand right over the camera. Um, no. Okay, let's start over. I've gotten all sorts of discombobulated. Anyway, I come to you every Wednesday night with three new projects to show you how I made them and hopefully you can turn around and make them yourself. Um, and we just have a lot of fun. We talk, we chat, we, uh, you know, make some jokes. We just have some fun here. So giving everybody a minute to find me, I am just trying to pull this up on uh, my computer monitor so that I can see all of your comments. Okay, looks like I need to mute that. Okay, so we're on. I see Marsha, I see Robin. Hi, you guys. Welcome. Okay, so uh, just a couple of housekeeping things before we get going. want to remind everybody we're halfway through Celebration already. Can you believe it? Celebration is a um, special promotion that we're doing once this year, and it's uh, all January and February. And there's a booklet of about 10 different gifts that you can choose for free for every $50 that you spend. There are a couple that you need to spend $100 to choose them. Um, most of them, however, are 50. And then today, Stampin' Up! released a list of 10 more items that they um, are offering for you to choose as free gifts uh, for the rest of February, for the rest of the campaign. So um, if you have not placed your celebration order yet, you definitely want to do that because once things sell out during celebration, they don't replace them uh, because it is such a limited time. So a lot of times, you know, some of those free gifts are so hot and everybody loves them. And then by the time you get a chance to go place your order, they're already out of them. So um, you don't want to wait till the last minute because that does happen. Um, when I turn the camera around, you'll see my website address, and I would love the opportunity to earn your business. Uh, you can shop online at my store at that website address that you're going to see, and we'll talk about it a little bit at the end um, as well. Also, I want to remind you that if you are even halfway remotely, sort of, kind of, possibly interested in joining Stampin' Up! Now is a great time to do it, and I'm happy to talk to you about it, answer any questions you have, and a no-pressure type of conversation. Um, we've got a really amazing deal right now during celebration. For $129, you get to pick $175 worth of products of your choice for free. In addition to that, you also get a paper pumpkin kit, you get some catalogs and things like that. You get free shipping on your kit and you know our mini, hang on here, Lucy, stop. Our mini cutting and embossing machine well, you can get one of those for free also. So for $129, you're getting a little over $100 worth of free products. Um, and you can choose the cutting embossing machine, get it in the standard white, or they brought out a special edition color just for this promotion. Um, and gosh, I keep forgetting the name of it, but it's a blue. It's kind of like a, um, a darker cornflower blue. It's beautiful. So anyway, um, you know, with lots of people join Stampin' Up! Sometimes they join it because they want to build a business. Some people get it just because they want the discount and some do it just because they want the kit. And you know what? Stampin' Up! supports any one of those um, reasons. So again, it's the best deal we've got. Like I said, it's over $100 worth of free stuff. And if you sign up and then decide it's not for you, no harm, no foul, you just go back to being a customer and you keep your kit. So if you have questions about it, um, you can go to my website and find out more information or you can contact me directly and my email address um, will show here in just a minute as well or you can send me a message here on Facebook. So definitely think about that, joining my team as well as placing your celebration order um, sooner than later so that you can still choose from the free gifts that you want. So let's go ahead and get this camera turned around. We're gonna do our drawing for the week. The way our drawing works is all you have to do is participate in the conversation. Say hello, tell, um, you know, even if you don't feel like saying anything more than hello, say hello and tell me where you're from. I'd love to hear where people are from. Um, but you can participate in the conversation, ask each other the questions, answer one another's questions, talk to me, ask me questions, offer suggestions. 
anything like that, any comment you make is gonna put you in a drawing for a free gift next week when I go live. Now, if you're watching this on a replay, either on Facebook or YouTube, um, you do not have to be part of the live conversation for your comments to count. So if you um, are watching this as a replay, definitely comment questions, um, hello, where? tell me where you're from, any of that kind of stuff, and your name will still go into the drawing that I will award next week. So with that in mind, we're gonna award this week's winner. So let me get this camera turned around and we'll get going on that. Hang on. Get my camera all straightened up here. Okay. Let's see who else has joined us here. We've gotten quite a few people joining us in the last couple minutes. So let's see. Um, I am doing well, Marsha. Thank you. Hello, Judy from Canada. We've got Nell has joined us. Crystal's joined us. John and Kathy. Um, yes, I did let uh, Lucy get into the screen a little bit. Sometimes it's easier to just let her do her thing, and then, then she settles down and um, lets me do mine. Ooh, John's in Maine, so we've got some East Coasters. Awesome. Hey, Mary, welcome. Colleen, welcome. Yes, Mary, Lucy is getting big. Uh, she's getting very big. In fact, I think I'm going to have to get a bigger bed because she and I share a twin-size bed, and it's hysterical. Um, so, yeah, she's getting to be a big girl. So let's go ahead and do this week's drawing. This week's drawing, I've got these great little doilies that Stampin' Up! came out with a little while ago. They come in three colors. Let's see. I'll just open it up. This week's winner is Kathy Sanford. And um, congratulations, Kathy. You get 30 of these little doilies. And they have um, this kind of a cinnamon color. This kind of greenish grayish sort of and then this blue and um i think this is just really super pretty and um these are fun to use in your on your cards as backgrounds or you know any of that kind of stuff they're a lot of fun so again congratulations to kathy kathy i can't recall if i have your mailing address or not so um if you could shoot me an email at stamphappenings at gmail.com or a message here on facebook and just let me know your mailing address that way i know i have it okay so let's get started on our cards our first card this week, we're going to use, we're going to do a little bit of water coloring, and I'm using the In the Country stamp set. This is one of the gifts that you can choose for free during celebration. And then I'm also using my Go To Greetings stamp set. I love this stamp set because you can see it uses sayings that are very, very common, but it's got three different fonts of those sayings. So um, it is definitely a well loved stamp set. Let me show you the card we're going to make is this one right here. And I'm going to show you how simple watercoloring can be. Now, I say that I should be careful. Hang on. Stay out of there. Sorry about that. Lucy, leave it. Leave it. Sorry. Um, anyway, um, not to diminish what actual watercolor artists do. They do some pretty amazing things, and I am not a watercolor artist, and I cannot do what they do. So I don't wanna make it sound like I'm saying, oh, watercoloring is so simple, and you know, they don't, you know, what they do is no big deal. It is a big deal, but there are some very simple techniques that you and I, people like us who are not artists, can do, um, to, to play with watercolor a little bit. Okay, hold on just a second. I have to put Lucy in her crate. Okay, sorry about that. She was just trying to grab everything off my desk and trying to, she likes to try to grab my pants and pull them off and that's just not something you guys want to see 
cap it. Anyway, okay, so we're going to do some simple watercoloring techniques um, tonight. Let's start by um, getting our envelope ready. You guys know the drill on this one. You know, Marsha, this stamp set, when I first got it, I, I wasn't super wild about it. I was like, yeah, it's, it's just not really my style. And, but the more I looked at it, the more I really did actually start to like it. And I was like, you know, I think I can create something with that. And, um, and I'm glad that I started to play with it because I do really like it. Okay. I think my glue might be starting to run out. And I don't know if my glue is running out or if my, if my um, bottle is just clogged. So I'm going to try to poke it with a little, um, words are hard tonight. I am having such a hard time. Hey, Teresa, welcome. Okay, there we go. I've got some glue coming out of this bottle now. Let's see if we can make this work now. If it's going to continue to be problematic, I will just grab another bottle. Oh, yeah, now it's coming out full force. Whew. That's a lot of glue. So when that happens to you and you accidentally get way more glue than you wanted, let me show you a little trick. At that point, what you can do, let's put the lid back on for a moment. You can take any kind of like a little spatula tool, um, you know, even your finger, it doesn't matter really. And I'm just trying to push it in and spread it out a little bit so that I don't have so much of the glue in any one given spot. Now, doing this, you'll see I'm getting some glue on the envelope itself, and I'll show you how to fix that too. First, let's go ahead and wipe this off. We'll put our paper on. Now, one reason I really like the liquid glue is because it has a little bit of time before it gets tacky where you can kind of wiggle it around to make sure your placement is good. But because I did what I had to do with spreading that around, it got tacky way before I was ready for it to be tacky. So now I'm kind of having an issue with it and just trying to line it up right. So bear with me. Kind of fun um, this week one of my one of my friends that I grew up with uh, turned 50 and so there was a birthday party for her at a little cafe that uh, is here in town and it was kind of funny because it my mom was with me and um, you know it just got everybody talking about there was a group of us that hung around together in school and so it was you know, okay, so when does so-and-so turn 50? And when does so-and-so turn 50? Because everybody's turning 50 right now, you know? And, um, and it's funny because we all agreed, whether it was the people our parents' ages or us, we all agreed that our own age doesn't seem to bother us much. But when we hear our children getting to ages like this, that's what makes us feel old. Hey, Lori, welcome. Um, so anyway, we have this conversation of, you know, okay, who's turning 50 next? Well, I'm the baby of the group, so I'm going to be the last one to turn 50 in June. Okay, so we got our envelope there. Now, I got glue all over it because of my little mishap. That's really not a big deal. Uh, I have a glue eraser here, and um, during the month of celebration, uh, well, first of all, I'll let you know, these glue erasers, these are not something that Stampin' Up! sells. Uh, this is just something I picked up off of Amazon, and I do have a few in my possession. So during celebration, anyone who places an order over $75 or seventy-five dollars or more, I will send you one of my glue erasers. But see how it's just, it's just getting that glue right off the paper. And um, so that's why it's not a huge deal that it got glue on the paper to begin with. And then there's some along this edge as well. Um, I just kind of got glue everywhere with that little mishap. So um, sorry about the shaking here. You got to do it kind of hard, but it um, is nice that it gets it off of there for you. And I may come back and just do this part 
if it's not coming up quickly, I may come back and do it later, just so that you don't have to sit here and watch me erase all night. Let's see what's happening here. But it does come off. It's not a big deal. And I'll tell you, I, well, you can see mine's very well loved. I use mine a lot um, because I tend to be a bit messy with the glue. There. See, now we got all that extra glue off. And no one ever needs to be the wiser about it. What day in June? I am June 29th now. Welcome, Dolly. It's nice to see you. Robin's got the double digits coming up this month, uh, this year, 55. You know, like I said, the, the number really doesn't phase me, but I feel old um, as my children age. It's like, how can I have a child that age, you know? Okay, so this um, card base is a half of a sheet of designer, or I'm sorry, of our cardstock. It's uh, four and a quarter wide by 11 inches long, so I just cut the sheet lengthwise or hot dog. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a nice crisp edge there. Throw this little scrap away that just jumped out at me. And I'm going to set this aside for now. Now I've got two pieces of white here. I've got my basic white, which is going to go on the inside. And then I have a piece of white. This is our watercolor paper. And I'll tell you, especially if you're not a watercolor artist, you know, like myself, I'm not a watercolor artist. Um, this paper is almost is practically a must-have. You can do watercoloring on our regular basic white, but you get such a good effect when you use real watercolor paper because it's designed to absorb the water into its fibers um, better than regular cardstock is, and it won't warp like regular cardstock does. So now I'm going to take, I have, this is just a little strip that matches the designer series paper that we used on the envelope. So I'm going to add a little glue to this. Little goes a long way, remember that, with this liquid glue. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick this down right up to the edge, I think. Oops. See how I can kind of wiggle it? That's because it hasn't gotten tacky yet. It does get tacky pretty quickly though, um, so you don't have to worry about it taking forever to dry, but it just gives you that little bit of extra time that sometimes you need. Now let's go ahead and trim off the extra pieces here. Okay. And we can go ahead and glue this into the inside of our card so that we don't lose it. And the, fun part, the front part is the fun part anyway, because I, I love that watercoloring stuff. It just, it's simple, and it just creates a really dramatic effect. I like it a lot. So we're going to mount this onto the inside of our card, make sure that all of the um, borders are relatively the same. I forgot to stamp my sentiment on there. Remember, um, you want to stamp your sentiment before you glue it in like I did, because if you make a mistake, you can still flip your paper over. So I'm going to use soft suede to do the sentiment. Robin, your kids are similar in age to mine. Mine are 21, 23, and 25. Okay, I'm going to stamp that down, my little sentiment. Press it straight down and then straight back up. Off my stamp well. Also, a reminder if you have given any kind of consideration to signing up at, to be a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, that's our monthly subscription service where you get a little boxed kit with everything that you need in it besides scissors, um, including an ink spot, a, stamp, a set of stamps, die cuts card fronts, envelopes, all, I mean, the whole shebang. Um, if you like our Plain in the Rain stamp set, um, which I'll show you here in just a second, just to remind you what it is, it looks like next month's paper, or this month's paper pumpkin kit is going to coordinate with it. Let me show you. This is the set, and 
um, it's just fun. It, it's so cute. Anyway, it looks like next month's paper pumpkin kit or this month's, I'm sorry, is going to coordinate with this. So you may want to sign up for that. Um, and celebration is the best time to sign up for paper pumpkin because if you sign up for a three, six or 12 month subscription, um, then, uh, it's, it qualifies for celebration gifts, so you might as well get some free stuff at the same time. Okay, so now let's start with our watercoloring technique, okay? We'll get going a little bit here. First thing I do is I have just a, this is one of my acrylic blocks. Oh, that's funny, Susan. Um, acrylic block, and we're going to use that as kind of our palette for our paint, I guess. And then I'm also, let me find them here. I've got my re-inkers. I have one in Old Olive, Mossy Meadow, and Sahara Sand. So we're going to set those right here for the moment. And then I also have my tools. I've got two of my Aqua Painters. These actually sell in a set of three. Um, this is the Fine Tip one. Here is the Wide Tip one. And then there's one that's kind of in between the two. Tonight we're going to use these two. And then I also have a spritzer. My spritzer, the spritzers come in a set of three and I wanna say they're like four bucks or something. It's a really good deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spritzer and I'm getting my paper nice and wet. See how I'm doing that? Just spraying all over it. Get it nice and wet. That just kind of helps prepare it to um, take the ink and water and all of that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my Sahara sand and Put a couple dots here. And then I also have just a little container here of water. The Aqua Painters, um, you put water in the shaft of the brush itself. Um, but when I'm doing the water coloring like this where I need it to be really wet, I prefer to uh, have just a little thing of water especially because if I'm going to be switching colors, it's super easy to, um, super easy to, um, clean my brush. Okay. So I think I want that to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just adding a little more water to that. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my wet paper and see how it just kind of bleeds out like that. You want it to do that. So that's all I'm going to do with that. I'm going to clean off my brush. Okay, and then I had, oh, there's my paper towel. I have some paper towels. Okay, now certain things I have to put away just to make sure that I don't get myself messy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my embossing tool. And the reason for this is because you do need to let the paper dry a little bit and we don't have time for that tonight. So I'm using my heat gun to go ahead and just dry this. Oh, did I hear somebody say it's Colleen's birthday today? Happy birthday, Colleen. Okay. So I'm letting this dry. Still a little bit wet. And it doesn't have to be super, super dry. Just enough that as wet as we had it before. Remember how it bled when we put the ink on there? Well, if we stamp with it like that, your stamped image is going to bleed as well. And we don't want that. So now I'm going to take my stays on ink, my black stays on. Stays on is the better ink to use if you are water coloring, okay? It's, it's, um, it just works with water better. If you use our Memento ink, it's more of an um, alcohol-based ink, and it will smudge and smear and bleed um, quite a bit. So, 
Now we're going to take this stamp, the little outside of the building. I'm not quite sure what it is. I sort of imagine that it's like a little chapel or a church or something, but I don't know that. Get it nice and inky. And now I'm going to stamp it here. I'm kind of doing it in the lower corner there. Not all the way down, but in part. Make sure it's pressed down evenly so you get a good image there, just like that. Remember, when you use stays on ink, it will stain your stamp. So it looks like that. It looks like I didn't get it clean. That's okay. The stamp is clean. If I stamp on something else, see, it doesn't leave that image. It has just stained the stamp, and that's just what happens with stays on. Now, we do sell a cleaner that um, helps clean off your stamps if you use stays on, if that kind of thing bothers you. But it doesn't cause any problems, so... I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now I'm taking my littler brush, right? And I'm still working with the Sahara Sand ink. And I wanna get these little shaded areas where the steps are. Ooh, that was a little darker than I intended. You see where it's got all those little lines that imply shading? So that's kind of where I'm trying to get this right now. And with watercoloring, it's a lot like when you use your blender pens. Remember how I said, if you're going to add color, let it soak in a little bit before you add color. Um, and then it will build the color. It'll give you layers of color rather than it just kind of going into like a little blob. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just some of these little areas like this where it's just, you know, little marks on the walls, that kind of thing. I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just kind of brushing over them a little bit. Okay. Let's see, like that. Now what I'm going to do is clean off my brush. I'm not going to wipe off that Sahara sand off the block yet, just because I, I may want to come back to it. I may not. So now I'm going to start with my old olive, and I'm putting a drop of that down. And my brush. I do want that a little bit waterier. Tap your brush on your um, scrap paper first. It just allows you to get some of that extra water off. And see, I'm just kind of dabbing everywhere to add this green for the plants. Oop, see that one? I didn't get enough water off of it, and it just kind of made it blobby. Okay. If you've got a little blobby pan, take your paper towel and just kind of pick up some of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mossy meadow and a little drop of that. And you can see I'm only using like a drop, so it doesn't use a whole lot of your reinker. Water this down just a little bit because it's awfully dark. And now I'm just going to kind of touch up little spots here. So it's adding just a little bit of color variation to my little plants. Okay, and now clean off my brush, and that's really all you have to do there. Now you can um, take the hairdryer to it and dry it again if you want, and I may do that because I got it a little wetter than I had planned to when I was coloring. Okay, get my brush all nice and clean. Still got a little bit of green to it. And it's still got a lot of bit of green to it. There, I think that's probably better, a lot better. It looks better. Yep, okay. So, I'm just gonna throw this in my kitchen sink real quick so I don't spill it all over myself.
And then I'm just gonna take my paper towel and go like this to clean off my block. Baby wipes work well too. So there you go, That's and that's what I use that block for. So let's just heat this just for a moment to let it dry up just a little. can see the difference between the two. I got a little bit more of that green in there on the one we're making tonight, but that's okay. They're all going to look a little bit different. So now we're going to go ahead and glue this onto the green, the mossy meadow. Lucy is being a turd and trying to take everything off my desk, which is why she's in her crate. Okay, so now line that up just like that. Now, before we mount that onto the card, making sure I didn't get paint all over myself. So here I've got this ribbon. This ribbon is so pretty. It's soft and it's kind of reminds me a little bit of a twill sort of. Um, and there's actually two pieces here. And this comes in a two pack where you get this and then you also get a roll of like the mossy meadow which we're going to use in another project so i'll make sure to point it out to you but but it is nice when you get these little two packs so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to wrap that around and i'm going to tape it okay that's going to make it a nice easy little bow make sure that everything lays the way that i want it to lay flat So the first thing I'm going to do is pull this side down and then I'm going to look at it again because I want to make sure that I'm doing it straight, okay? So, yep, that, that looks good enough. Okay, so take my chair and tape again. Tape this down. There. So now it lays flat. Now I'm going to take this shorter piece and I'm just going to tie one single little knot here. See, and now it looks like I tied it around the regular way, but it lays nice and flat. And I'm going to go ahead and trim these ends. Ooh, that was not a good cut. Not a good cut. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and mount it onto the card. I'm going to use my foam adhesive sheets for that. And for something this size, I typically take about a half of a sheet. And I'm going to cut it in thirds lengthwise. And this way I can spread it out a little bit. And, um, and it still will be very effective on the back but I don't have saggy issues. And if any of you are feeling sorry for my poor doggy that you hear crying in the background, um, Jackson is in the process of getting her a peanut butter treat so that she should be happy in there. Okay. So now I'm just peeling this release tape off and I'm going to mount this onto the front of my card. Try your best to center it and make sure your margins are relatively the same. Be careful because this adhesive is pretty unforgiving if you lay this down and it's not quite where you want it. Fortunately, I hadn't pressed it down yet and I was able to lift mine back up. So the final thing we're going to put on here is I have these um, enamel dot essentials. They come in white, kind of a tan and a navy. And the tan I felt was too dark for what I was trying to do. What do you guys think? What I did is I took my dark crumb cake um, stamp and blend and I colored the white ones to be this lighter shade. So what do you guys think? Should I do the lighter shade or should I put these darker brown ones on there? I'll give you guys a moment to answer 
concern. Tell me what you guys think. You're right, Susan. Just a few strokes of the brush makes such a difference. And that's what I love about the watercoloring. Like I said, a, a true artist can do so much more. And, and um, I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying what they do is so easy. Uh, but there are easy techniques you can do. So let's see. It looks like Marsha's out traveling right now. She went to see her daughter. So that's kind of cool that you got to do that. So you're in Washington. Well, no. Okay, so Colleen has said she likes the lighter ones. Robin says dark. Teresa says dark. Um, oh, thank you for sharing my video, Marsha. That helps me a lot. Kathy says lighter. Mar Mary says dark. Judy says dark. So I'm getting a few more votes for the dark. So let's go ahead and put the dark on. And then we can compare the two that are done and see what you think. So I'm going to take my take your pick tool. Let's see. We'll get a big one here. And put it right about, mm, let's say right about there with one of the medium size. These come in three different sizes. I th You can probably see that. There's large, medium, small. And I'm using the large and the medium. And then, let's see. There. So we've got it with the lighter and the darker. What do you guys think? And you know what? I did have somebody last week ask me if I would start giving the measurements of everything as I do it. And I will try my best to remember to do that. Um, the watercolor paper here is just three and a half by five, three and a half by five, that's what it was. Three, because a sheet of the watercolor paper is five by seven. So it's a half of a sheet. So three and a half by five. And then the mat that I did is just an eighth of an inch bigger. So it was three and five eighths by five and one eighth. And then of course the little piece on the inside is just five and a quarter by four. And that's pretty standard for what I do on the inside of my cards. So if I forget to tell you that, that's pretty much my norm. Okay, now clean up my mess and we'll get going on card number two. What do you guys think of that one? People are commenting that they liked both the light and the dark. So, so it's good to know that um, if you wanted to make that card, you could use the dots that are already provided or you could color them and they both look good. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of excited about this next card, you guys. It's just kind of a fun little Valentine card. Let's put some stuff away here. Goodness gracious. Got such a mess already. Okay, so this card uses the, um, oh, what's it called? Hang on. Dandy Designs Designer Series Paper, which you can earn for free during celebration. And um, it also uses this pack of... Um, Baker's Twine that I really like. I wanted to show it to you. When you buy it, you get three colors. You get kind of this um, Coastal Cabana, sort of pumpkin pie, and then I'm gonna guess that's garden green. Um, but you can see how how well these colors here are um, Calypso Coral, and it looks like uh, Pale Papaya, but that pumpkin pie string looked really good with it. So you can do a lot with these, and it's, again, where you get multiples in one pack. It's a great deal. Okay, so let's get started on this card. We'll do our envelope first. And for this, I just take a two and a half inch by six inch strip. We're going to glue it on there. Try not to make such a big mess this time.
Yes, that is much better. <laughs> okay. And I'm just lining up my designer series paper with the top of my envelope. Now we're going to cut off the extra. And if you cut a little bit of your envelope, that's okay. My goodness, I am absolutely roasting. I need to take my sweatshirt off. I think it's just that lovely time in my life where, you know, one minute I'm dying of a heat stroke and the next minute I'm freezing to death. And, you know, it is what it is, right? Okay. So throw that little garbage over there. Take off my sweatshirt before I die of a heat stroke. All right. Now I'm ready to cruise. Okay. So... Our card base is standard card base. It's a half of a sheet cut um, width wise. So it's eight and a half by five and a half and it's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. And that, I call it the standard card base because I would say that the majority of my cards, that's the lineup for me. So now what we're gonna do, let's do the inside. We've got, a, we've got two pieces of basic white. One's for the inside, one's for the outside. Let's do the inside first. So I have this little strip of the cardstock, or I'm sorry, the designer series paper. We're gonna glue that down to the inside or the white piece that's going on the inside. There we go. And now I'm just gonna trim off the ends. I like to cut these strips a little bit longer than what I need and then trim off the extra because it drives me absolutely crazy when they're just a tiny bit too short. And then it's like that's all I can see from that point on. So um, if I make it a little bit long, I can cut off the extra. So let's go ahead now and glue this to the inside of our card. Got some glue on there that I'm going to have to take off with my glue eraser. Okay. Sorry for the shaking, guys. There we go. Okay. Now we'll move that out of the way while we work on the rest of the card. So I have this piece of basic white and I have, and this piece is um, five and a quarter by four inches. And then I have this little strip that is like two and a sixteenth inch, something like that, um, so that it'll fit on here, so that it would be roughly half of this piece. So let's go ahead and glue her down. And I've got just really teeny tiny white margins there, just enough that I like to do that because I think, I feel like it just makes it pop off the card a little bit better. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna get that kitty on there. So we're gonna start with our twine. And we also have just a scrap of basic white and I'm gonna show you a little trick. When I have a stamp like this one that has a really solid image like that, just really solid and you want it nice and dark, especially black, um, I found that it really helps if I use my Stamparatus. And I'm gonna show you why. So first let's ink up the stamp. Oh, I forgot to get the cards out. This is the stamp set we're using, Love Cats, with all these little mischievous guys. I love them, I think they're cute. Okay, oops, let's move this out of the way. So I'm going to take my black Memento ink here, and I'm gonna ink up my stamp. So that's how I'm starting. Okay, oh, how about if I put my paper on the, on the Stamparatus, that probably helps too. So I like to put just a little bit of adhesive there on my paper. Oh, see, I got ink on there, that's not good. 
um, I put a little tape on there, adhesive on there, because it just holds it in place. And then I always line it up with this corner here, just so that when I come back to it, I always know where I did it. But you can mark it, you can use dry erase markers, you can do whatever. Okay, so let me just get a little more ink on this. So let's say hey, we stamp the kitty here, right? And we pull it up and see how it's just not really dark, solid looking there. Can you guys see that okay? So by doing this on my Stamparatus, now I intentionally did this light um, because I wanted it to look like that because I wanted to show you when you use the Stamparatus, you can avoid it looking like that because we can go back, we can re-ink it. Go back over it again and we know that it's going to stamp in the exact same spot. So you don't have to worry about lining up your stamps. Now, this is just a um, air hockey paddle thing I got off of Amazon. Like everything I have is off of Amazon, I swear. Um, and I like it because I just, I mean, it, it moves nice and smooth on here, but I can really rub it in well to make sure I get a nice, good image. And see now how dark that is? That's what I was going for. And sometimes with those solid stamps like that, you have to do it twice to get that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm taking my chamois here and I'm just cleaning off that ink that I got on my, on my, um, I don't know what that is, my little plastic. Oh, and then I'm gonna clean off my stamp. And it's really easy to clean them up this way. There we go. And I'll just leave it there until after I'm done here tonight because then I'll um, put all my stamps away and such. But that is one reason why I love my Stamparatus. Okay, so now I'm gonna fussy cut the kitty. So this shouldn't take me too terribly long. There's not a ton of intricate details to cut. Remember to move your paper, not your scissors. And you can always come back and trim if you need to. Now I cut up a little bit into the body there. I'm gonna show you why in a minute. But first we're gonna just focus on getting him cut out. Okay. Yeah, I, I see your comment there, Robin, about bathing in the glue. I can't help it. You know, if I'm not laying down in ink pads, I'm bathing in the glue. I just, I'm kind of like, you know, um, Pigpen from the Peanuts, where he like just goes outside and all the dirt just attracts to him. That's kind of the way I am. If there is a mess to be had, it will find its way to me. Almost done here. Well, I guess we're almost halfway done. Got all excited there for a moment. And you can see I'm cutting the string off. Okay, good grief, Lucy, what are you doing? Okay, so there is our little kitty. He looks good to me. Now what I'm gonna do, and I could have done this before I cut him out, but that's okay. I'm gonna take my light and dark Calypso Coral markers, and I'm just gonna color that little heart. 
So I'm going to start with the dark and just kind of do a little bit on this side like this. And then I'm going to take the lighter one. Blend it. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my card front piece here. And I'm going to put my string through the cat. Stringing up the cat. Okay, so this piece is going to eventually cover that little white line. I tried using a glue dot to hold it in place and found that it just kind of ended up actually getting more in the way, the glue dot. So I don't think you need it. I ended up taking it off. But what I'm going to do now is figure out about where I want to place this so that it looks like the cat is um, hanging on there. And what I'll do when I come around, I'll be able to, I'll move the cat to be the angle of that um, twine, okay? So let's go ahead and figure out where we want to tape this on the back. So I'm going to put down my first one like this. Now I want it, I want it to be relatively even on both sides. I want to have a little bit of slack because I want that cat to be able to come down, but I don't want so much slack that then it's loose. Okay. So I think, I think this is going to be okay like this. We can adjust it if we need to. Oops. Throwing my kitty all around. Okay. So now we're going to, we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of a cat. And I think I'm going to use the mini dimensionals because, hold on here, uh, because there are some parts on the cat that are a little smaller. And one thing I found is whatever kind of foam adhesive you use, you want to be consistent on the project because the pieces, or the different um, foam adhesives, sometimes they're various thicknesses. So you want to... Um, Make sure there's consistency on your card so you don't end up with it kind of weird, lumpy, bumpy everywhere. Oops. Lucy, what are you doing? Jackson gave her her um, peanut butter treat. It's a, it's a bone that, uh, what's that, Kong, that the ends of the bone, you can put peanut butter in it. So... She likes that, and I think she got some on the bars of her crate. So now she's um, trying to lick it off of her crate. Okay. Just a few small pieces here. That one's over a little far. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take all these backs off. Got this little extra back floating around back here. Okay, now, so now we're going to line the kitty up on this. Oops. There we go. And remember, it's going to go through where I slid his little belly. I you know, I'm a bad cat mom, right? Okay, and now we can just line it up in such a way that we move him to an angle that that string is going to cover that white There. 
da. Okay, so now, I did that much faster last night. Isn't that the way it always goes when you try to do it for something like that? It's like quick and easy. And then when you try to do it on camera or in front of other people, it just goes bonkers. Okay, so now I have the stamp. I love hanging out with you. And I'm going to take my Calypso Coral ink. Ooh. And stamp it right here. There we go. And close up the ink pad. And now we just need to stick that to the front of our card and we're done. Oops. That looks kind of crooked, sort of. It is. It is kind of crooked, sort of. Okay, so let's just line that up a little bit better. There we go. Okay, calling it good. So there we have card number two. What do you guys think of that one? <laughs> Robin. <laughs> Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to project number three. We're doing pretty good tonight, aren't we? Uh, oops, I need to clean up my mess a little bit first. Okay. For this one, we're going to use Elephant Parade with all the little baby elephants. I thought it would be fun to make a card. My, um, The CEO of my company, he and his wife just had their sixth baby. And so I thought I would make a card that I could send to them. But I don't really have any baby stuff. This is the closest I have. So we're going to use this card. And um, we're using the Elephant Parade stamps. We're using the Elephant dies. And then we're also using the Something Fancy dies. And these are kind of fun because they're just different sort of labels and such that you can use. So let's get started. This is the card we're going to make. And I thought this was kind of gender neutral with the purple and the blue and the green. Could really go for either gender on the inside of the card. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, we're just gluing the strip onto the flap of the envelope. It's two and a half inches by six inches. Okay. So tomorrow is Groundhog's Day. Oh, thank you, Colleen. Um, tomorrow is Groundhog's Day. What does everybody think Puxatawney Phil is going to do? And I can never remember if he sees his shadow, is it six more weeks of winter? Or is it if he doesn't see a shadow? I can never remember which it is. But what do you guys think here? Are we going to have six more weeks of winter or, or are we going to have an early spring? Okay, so now I'm just going to trim off the extra here. I'm hoping for an early spring, but it just seems like here in Spokane, well, in in Washington, I should say, because this was the case even when I lived over on the western coast of the state, um, we always get a, Feb a big February storm. Like, it doesn't matter how out of winter it looks like we've gotten, we still get a big, a big storm in February. So, for me, for Groundhog's Day, I always say, well, we're going to have more winter. I would love to have an early spring, but I think it's going to be more winter because we haven't had our February storm yet. Because, you know, it's only the 1st of February. Okay, so Robin says shadow. Tell me, Robin, which is which? If they see the shadow, is it spring? Or if they see the shadow, is it winter? more winter? Okay. So this is a half of a sheet of basic white cardstock. Um, my standard cut where it's eight and a half by five and a half. So scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So let's go ahead and I'm finding lately I really like using um, a white 
card base. I just think it gives such sharp lines. And I've noticed I'm doing it a lot lately. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I have this little tiny strip that we're going to glue to the inside. And see, we don't even have to put a piece. Um, normally, I put a piece of white on the inside. Obviously, we don't have to do that when the card is white. Okay. And I'm just going to line this strip up. Now, this strip, I cut it just slightly shorter than the card itself, so it, wasn't, so it doesn't go completely end to end. It's got just a little bit of a mat around the edges there. Okay, now I have these strips. And these are one and a quarter inches wide. And I'm just gonna lay them down. So we'll start with the blue one. Now, a lot of times what I tell people to do is do the middle one and then do the pieces around the middle so that you have good spacing. But that's what I did last night. And then my middle one wasn't right in the center. And so it looked kind of weird. So for this one, see me bathing in the glue again, um, I decided to go ahead and put the outer ones on first. And then I will center the middle one in between them. Oops, that's the one I wanted in the middle, darn it. I wasn't paying attention. I am doing well. Thank you for asking, Robin. You know, we're finally getting settled into our place. You know, it's only been three months, right? Getting settled in and getting a routine going and... Okay, now let's try this again. Put a little bit more glue on here. Not a lot. And now I'm just gonna line this up in the middle between these two. And again, for this, it's very helpful to use the liquid glue because I can wiggle it around a little. like the way that sticks up so I'm just going to put a tiny little dot of glue behind it because it'll drive me crazy. There we go. Now I can feel better about that. Let's get going on the rest of our card. So here I have a little, a little tag, a piece of just scratch paper and then I have my little banner for um, the sentiment. So let's go ahead and get our stamping done. I'm going to use the black memento ink on this one. And let's see. I've got my little baby elephant. I've got my sentiment. And I have cute little butterflies. So we'll start with the sentiment. Try to line it up on here. Hopefully I get it straight. Ooh, that's pretty crooked, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the butterflies and I'm just going to stamp a couple of them right there, just like that. That one is pretty dark. I think I pressed a little hard on that one, but that's a, that's all right. Now I'm going to take my scrap paper, ink up my little elephant guy. There we go. Now let's do a little bit of coloring. So I have a lot of my Stampin' Blends for this. Okay, I wanted to make sure I grabbed all the the ones that I need. So I'm going to move my sentiment out of the way. I'm going to put my ink pad away. 
This is the ribbon that I was talking about that goes with the other ribbon that we used on the first card, that kind of um, khaki color ribbon comes with a roll of this. They're both nice and soft and easy to work with. Okay, so let's start with the butterflies. For the butterflies, what I did is I just um, took my dark, fresh freesia, and I'm coloring in the little spots. And then I'm taking my light, um, balmy blue, and I'm going to color in the butterflies. Obviously, I'm not going to worry about shading or anything like that um, on one this small. I just want it to have some color. Okay, and then um, I'm taking the light smoky slate. Maybe I want to use the, yeah, the light smoky slate works. And just to color their little bodies. There we go. Okay, now for the elephant itself. Let's do the ears first. And I'm taking the dark petal pink and I'm just going around the outer edges of the ears, like so. Now I'm going to take the light petal, the petal pink Okay. Okay, so now for the elephant, I'm going to start with my Oh, wait, I still need my blue. I'm going to start with my dark, smoky slate. And I'm going to go around the edges of the ears. And I'm going to get his little hairs on the top of his head. And I want to get, you know, kind of like this. I want to get those little um, bend marks on his trunk and his little worry lines. I'm going to color his little tail and his toes. And just kind of some scratchy marks like that. Then I'm going to take the light and I'm going to fill in the rest. This is light smoky slate, by the way. Oh, and the strips on the front of the card. I told you they were one and a quarter inches wide, they are five and a quarter inches long. Just kind of trying to blend that a little bit more. Now, I wanted him to have a little bit more of a blue, um, bluish gray. So what I did is I have my light balmy blue. And I'm just kind of making some fine lines here. Not fine lines, but kind of lightly scratching through with the blue. And if you get too much blue, then what you do is you just take your light um, smoky slate and blend it in a little bit more. See, like I got a little bit too much blue 
on his bottom half there. So we'll just add a little bit of the light smoky slate back over that. It still gives him a little bit of a blue, um, hint of blue. And then we're just gonna let it sit, uh, let it absorb its color. If we need to add more color, we can, but let's let the color absorb in first. Now I'm bringing in my mini cutting and embossing machine. Remember at the beginning, I told you that you can get one of these for free if you join my team uh, during celebration, and you can choose it in this white color or in the, um, new, the blue color. And there's some debate um, about whether that new blue color is going to be one of our new colors that's introduced um, when our annual catalog comes out again. And, you know, Stampin' Up! isn't saying because it's always a fun surprise. They want it to be a surprise. Um, but people are speculating. Okay, so now I'm taking my post-it tape. Let's move this out of the way for a second. I want to tape my die in place. I think that looks good right there. Okay. Now I'll put my other plate over it. And we'll feed it through. Oh, I'm glad you like that idea, Susan. I know, Robin, some of those new um, gifts that they've added to the celebration gifts you can choose from Amazing. Okay. So we have our adorable little elephant here. Look at him, isn't he cute? Okay, so I'm put my die away before I lose it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and glue him down onto our tag. We're going to use dimensionals for that. And again, I think I'm going to use the small ones because there are some little small spots that I want to make sure that we get a dimensional on there. Oops. probably putting on more than I need but you know if it's worth doing it's worth overdoing okay let's put these away We're gonna stick him right here. Doo -doo -doo, isn't he cute? Then we're gonna take the green ribbon that we have and just tie a little bow. Maybe. <laughs> this is one heck of a bow this time around. Sometimes it's easier to just start over. That's better. Now I just play with it till it's laying the way I want it to lay. And it's the size I want it to be. my tails so they're kind of going downward. We're going to put a little glue dot on the back of the bow 
just right at the back of that knot. I put the bow right there. And I'm gonna wait to trim it, I think, until, well, I was gonna say until it's on the card, but I think we have a good idea of how long we want those tails to be anyway. Okay. And now we're gonna put a few dimensionals on the back of that, back of the tag. a few um, dimensionals that somehow got stuck to one another in my little packet so I want to use them up so that they don't continue to cause problems oh that one doesn't want to fine you can be replaced you are not irreplaceable And then I'm going to put it on my card at just a little bit of an angle here, like that. And then, where my sentiment go? There it is. We're going to put some dimensionals on that as well. a bit of an angle also and then the last little bit I've got my 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 op oh my goodness words are so hard tonight um John says he doesn't use a lot of bows because he struggles with making them look good what I would suggest if you want to um have bows but you do struggle with it go online and look for a bow maker. I have one that I got um, that is just simply a piece of wood that has nails that go into it and I tie my bows around it, but there's all sorts of them out there and they're not expensive at all. And you can do bows nice and quick and easy and they turn out perfect every time. Okay, so we're gonna put on these opaque adhesive backed gems. I'm gonna use some of the fresh freesia ones here. So let's see. Let's put one there and a little tiny baby one right there. Kind of trying to copy what I did on the first card. Because I sit there and I fiddle with it for so long trying to figure out where I want them for just like the perfect placement. So when I make them for you guys, I try to put them in the same spot so that I'm not messing around with them forever. There we go, that's, that's a little bit better. And then we'll take this big one and how about we put it right about there. There, so we've just got a few of them on there. And that's card number three. So let's put our stuff away and we'll start taking a look at everything that we made tonight. If you guys enjoyed what you saw um, and you want to get some of those supplies, well, first of all, if you enjoyed what you saw, and I hope you did, um, oh, Robin did clarify, the shadow means more winter. Um, so anyway, if you enjoyed this, I love it when you can give me some hearts, thumbs up, those kind of things. Um, that just helps with the algorithm, helps tell um, Facebook and YouTube that, hey, this is a video people are liking, so other people might like it too, and they put it out there for people to see. Um, the other thing you can do is share my video. That really helps me a lot. And then, of course, um, if you would like to purchase any supplies, doing so at my website um, helps me as well, and I would love to earn your business. So um, you can shop at my online website at heathersides.stampitup.net. And as always, if you have questions, concerns, suggestions, ideas, anything like that, you can send me an email at stamphappenings at gmail.com or you can um, send me a message here on Facebook. That works too. But make sure 
you do leave a comment, whether here on Facebook or on YouTube, so that your name goes into next week's drawing. So now let's see, we made this cute little baby elephant. We made our little kitty that's just hanging on the wire there. And then we made this beautiful little building that I still don't know what kind of building it is, but I'm gonna say it's like a church or something. And those are the cards that we made tonight. If you do decide to um, place any orders, take advantage of that celebration deal that's going on right now. Um, it would help me a lot if you would use this host code for the month of February, if your order is under $150. If, however, your order is over $150, then please don't use the host code because you will have some free gifts coming to you from Stampin' Up! in addition to those celebration gifts. I wanna make sure that you are the one who receives them when your order is over $150. So um, let me know if you have any questions, concerns, anything like that. And I am looking forward to seeing you guys same time, same place next Wednesday. And uh, in the meantime, have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.